Hey bells and boys. Okay, so this video is VSG related. I know that these videos have been coming few and far in between. Please, please, please forgive me for that. Um, but yes, this video video is going to be VSG related and going to be talking about some of the complications and side effects that some people do experience once they have had um, VSG or weight loss surgery. So if you're interested in this video, please stick around. Okay guys, so yeah. Um, complications or side effects of VSG are real. They do happen to people. Um, fortunately for me, I didn't suffer from too many different side effects. Um, but I figured I would touch on this topic because I don't think want people to think that like my whole process was just peaches and cream and roses and flowers and lilies and rainbows because I did have some of these um, complications. Not too severe, thank God. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to touch on this subject because I think sometimes people get into the process of VSG and forget to kind of do their own homework and their own research outside of maybe what the doctor has told them. Um, and it's always good to hear from other people and hear about their experiences as well. So yes, complications are real when you have VSG or any weight loss surgery. So it's very important that you um, not only you know stick to the plan as prescribed by your doctor, but that you also include your doctor on like when things happen to you. Because I think sometimes we like we like to kind of brush things under the rug um, and think that you know it'll go away on its own. One of the most common number one would be dehydration. Um, especially for me in the beginning. I, if you watch any of my older videos, you will see that I, I've always been very vocal about the fact that it sucked for me to have to drink in the beginning because it hurt. Um, so I would set a timer on my phone. I've said this in multiple videos. If you ever read me before, you know, I'm, I tell you, I, I used to set a timer on my phone that would remind me to get in, you know, the certain amount of liquids that I needed to get in. In a certain amount of time so for me that helped but dehydration is very common because like I said for me it does it did hurt sometimes you don't necessarily even feel thirsty um, but you do need that um, intake because you are now compromised in a way like you don't have a regular stomach so you need to make sure that you get in your fluids um, water very 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 important to get in water if you drink Gatorade or anything I would suggest G2 or like the Powerade Zero Another issue that some people do have is they will form gallstones um, in their gallbladder and they, that will lead to a, um, another surgery where you would have to have your gallbladder removed. I have not had this happen to me, um, but it does happen when you lose a lot of weight in a quick you know, amount of time, which happens with weight loss surgery. Um, some doctors, once you have surgery, they kind of just do all of it in one shot. They take out you know, whatever they need to take out. They do the gallbladder removal. I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> They do the gallbladder removal and everything while you're on the table. My surgeon did not. Another issue would be um, nausea or vomiting. I didn't really have the... I did get nauseous. I was about to say I didn't. But in the beginning, smells kind of made me nauseous. I was super high into different smells for some reason after my surgery. Um, so smells are going to make me nauseous. I didn't really vomit. Um, and this is what they actually call um, dumping. 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 Sorry. Um... For me, I did not dump out of my mouth. I dumped the other way. <laughs> um, so, um, some people do experience this. Um, like my sister, if you watch um, our FAQ video, you will see that my sister um, also had issues with vomiting and kind of other stuff just related to anesthesia. So, it can be related to a couple of different things, but this is a complication that some people do experience. Also, um, GERD. I kind of had an experience with GERD. I had lightly issues with acid reflux before surgery and then once I had surgery I was um, still doing some of those bad habits where I would eat something and then like go lay down within like that 30 minutes to an hour range and I like to lay on my stomach sometimes and oh my god and my I've woken up a couple of times in my sleep just like <gasps> raised up out of bed because I feel it like all in my throat um, I didn't necessarily throw up but it came back up so it was Ew, gross you know what I mean so that's another issue that some people do um, experience if you have a history of GERD I would definitely suggest you talk to your surgeon before surgery and you know bring that up with your primary care physician as well um, another issue that is very common that I actually did suffer from was constipation constipation is so real um, because things are different and you can you can do a, you know a whole nother um, kind of 
video on just the issue of constipation but just know that things are not gonna go the way they used to go so if you're one of those people who used to go once or twice a day like every day you more than likely will not be going that often like the first time after surgery I think I was like a week and a half out or maybe even two weeks before I went the first time um, and then after that it was kind of like once every couple of days for some people that's a really 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 big issue because they're used to going so often so regularly as you should but with VSG it's different so um, there is different ways to combat the whole constipation thing for me um, I, for the first time I tried um, smooth move tea and it was like an exorcism had happened to my body so I do not suggest that to people just because of my experience um, I've had smooth move before when I had a full tummy and it hurt but not like before, like not like after once I had VSG and I just tried the smooth move y'all it was like a demon was in my body <laughs> so I don't use that um, and I also tried the natural laxatives um, before didn't really like those either it was like a smaller demon was in me um, not so much like the smooth move demon but yeah um, so I don't really suggest that I still have those pills I think I took like two out of the whole bottle um, some people take Miralax every day or Colace. Oh crap, which one is it? One of those. I don't do either one of those. Um, what I used to do when I had this really big issue, because it's not really an issue anymore. I'm a year and a half basically out, so it's not really a big issue anymore. But some people, I mean, what I used to do was drink um, pear juice, and I will put that picture somewhere in here. Um, the pear juice that I drink, I actually got it from Walmart, and you just take a little eight ounce glass. You do not dilute it because you need all that sugar to get get it crunk down there or whatever. <laughs> um, so I drank the pear juice, it was tasty, and it did not have any demon seeds in me. So, um, next complication that may, um, that I've actually talked about on my channel before is depression slash buyer's remorse. If, again, if you watch my sister and I's FAQ video, you will see that, you know, my sister kind of had the buyer's remorse phase a lot longer than I did. Um, I was kind of in the buyer's remorse stage for like 24 to 48 hours, somewhere up in there. Um, my sister kind of dealt with it a little bit longer. Um, just because her experience was totally different from mine. So I always tell people to watch that video in particular if you feel like my journey has just been super cool. Buyer's remorse slash depression is nothing to be ashamed of and it does happen to people. Um, it's a big deal to go from, you know, eating whatever you want, whenever you want, however much of it that you want to not being able to eat much of anything and when you eat it hurts and like, you know what I mean? So, um, I always tell people to keep a journal or um, even record their own videos for themselves that they can go back to later on, you know, later on in the journey once things have gotten better and calmed down, to go back and review those because it does humble you. It does bring you back to center and back to focus and you're like, okay, this is why I did that so I don't feel that way I felt before. Um, so that's just my little tidbit on depression. You can. I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to tell you what to do or whatever about depression, but just know that it does happen. It is a common thing to deal with, um, but it is, you, it does get better. I promise you, like, if you hated it before in the beginning, in the first couple of months, about six months later into it, you're like, this is the best thing I ever did for myself. Um, another side effect or complication is hormone imbalance. I did deal with this. Um, but not like in a bad way. So before I had surgery, um, I did my own research and I saw that um, once you're losing, you know, a significant amount of weight, um, getting pregnant is a very common thing. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> no, no babies right now. So <laughs> what I did was I went to my doctor and got on the um, thing in your arm, the Nexplanon or Implanon. Implanon. I think it's called Nexplanon right now. Got put on that um, to kind of combat against the whole pregnancy thing, even though I wasn't really active. I hate people say active, but you know what I mean. So, got that, had the surgery, then my surgery happened, and then I was like on my cycle for a good 30, 31 days straight. So, I did suffer from the hormone imbalance. Um, I didn't really have a sex drive either. Um, that happens as well, or it goes the total opposite way where you're like, I need it and I need it now <laughs> um, so it kind of just depends on you and things that are going on with your body so because of me having the thing in my arm 
I actually got put on the birth control pill as well. So I was taking the pill and I still have the thing in my arm to kind of, you know, calm my hormones down. And it did after a year. So now I'm no longer on the pill. I just have the thing in my arm. And we're peachy king around here, you know what I'm saying? And we still baby free. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the last thing that I also have um, is a vitamin deficiency. So I talked about this in other videos that it's very important to take your vitamins. And like I said, do as I say, do not as I do. Um, take your vitamins every day because you do or you will form a deficiency even if it's not immediately because this is a lifestyle change so you're forever now going to have half of a tummy and you're forever now going to not be able to consume the you know levels of which you need certain vitamins so um, it's very common to have a, a vitamin deficiency make sure that, that you get blood work done every so often to kind of check your levels on things and check with your primary care physician and take your vitamins every day yeah guys that's all that i have um for you know complications and side effects of bsg if you watched the video and you liked it make sure that you give it a thumbs up if there was something that i did not cover and you think i should have covered please leave a comment below you never know who you could help and who you never know who's watching and yeah i think that's pretty much it guys yep all right so i will see you guys in my next video whenever that is all right guys bye